Right now, it's a race. There's going to be variants uh, for a long time. The virus against the vaccines and the boosters and possibly more boosters. The company is forging ahead with an Omicron-specific vaccine. But scientists have been working on what could be a better solution. The urgent need of a universal coronavirus vaccine. It's just what it sounds like. A vaccine that covers the circulating virus, yes, but also future variants we haven't even seen yet, and potentially other types of coronaviruses as well. That means not only targeting SARS-like viruses, but then targeting MERS-like viruses, or then also targeting cold viruses. Kevin Saunders is the director of research here at the Duke Human Vaccine Institute, one of the many groups racing to create a universal vaccine. What we try to do is really target a specific part of the virus, for, for instance, that we know is its Achilles heel. Now remember, viruses mutate all the time. So the trick is to find a stable part of the virus, a part that doesn't really change from one variant to the next, a common denominator. Saunders calls it a conserved site. Creating antibodies to that is one path to a universal vaccine. So typically that's a place where the virus is binding to a specific protein on the host cell that it's targeting. And if it changes that site, then it's no longer able to infect. A big clue came from someone who was infected with SARS all the way back in 2003. What is DH1047? The antibody DH1047 um, is, is an antibody that we found from a SARS-CoV-1 infected individual. 17 years later, in 2020, in the midst of the current outbreak, they found DH1047 was also protective against COVID, protective against a virus that didn't even exist when these antibodies were first made. And so we took that antibody as a template to say, there must be some site that's common between SARS-CoV-1 and SARS-CoV-2, and let's figure that out. Then we would know that needs to be in the vaccine. There are a number of pan-coronavirus vaccine strategies in the works, but unlike the mRNA vaccines we've come to know, at Duke, they're working on something called a nanoparticle vaccine. There's multiple sites that can be recognized by antibodies, Think of it like a soccer ball with tiny proteins stuck to the surface, each resembling a key conserved site of the virus's spike protein. So far in primates, the vaccine appears to work. And now, a similar vaccine developed by military scientists has already made it into early human trials. But as exciting as this science is, it's going to take time and patience. I don't want anyone to think that pan-coronavirus vaccines are literally around the corner in a month or two. It's going to take years to develop. Much of the work being done today on COVID is built on the back of similar research on other viruses, influenza, HIV. We've been working on an HIV vaccine now for almost 30 years uh, here at Duke. And HIV is one of the most rapidly evolving life forms on Earth. That's because HIV mutates much faster and that's one reason why Dr. Barton Haynes thinks developing a universal vaccine for coronaviruses may be easier. Developing that platform for HIV over the last five years allowed this to happen when the need arose very quickly. The most challenging part is that the, the virus is always changing. How do you predict what's coming in the future so that your vaccine can be effective against it? And he's not just talking about coronaviruses that are infecting humans right now but also novel ones that could still spill over from animals, ones we don't even know about yet. That's the type of vaccines we're going to need in order to prevent the next pandemic. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN.